this is Bella with Buddy System Games um, and today I'm going to be showing you how to add sprites into your Unity project. I'm working on an update for a demo of my game Little Bug um, and in this game it's a 3D platformer as you can see over here uh, and I have multiple 2D sprites in that 3D world so I'm just going to show you really quickly how you can just go in Flash, make a simple animation, and put it straight into your game. Um, I'm going to show you an example of how it works real quick in this uh, game I have mocked up here. Uh, so, so, the game loads. This is the very beginning of the game. And you lock up the car. And there you can see that little sprite just doing its magic. It's about six frames long. When I walk into it and collide it, another sprite pops up. And then that gets replaced by stuff and the game begins. So what I'm going to be showing you today is just how to make this sprite and put it into your game. Really straightforward. Probably in the next video I'll show you how to code all of this uh, interaction and make it fade in and out and do sort of fun animations. Um, but first let's go into Flash here. And we'll just let it load up. And This is a really simple process. Um, if you're going to be doing more complex sprites, you can definitely do it with this method, but I'm going to just be doing a two-frame one just to show you how to get started. Um, so let's change the color of the background. Since my game is really dark, I'm going to change the color of the background to black. And I use a Wacom Bamboo tablet, just a really basic tablet. So I like to have this option on here, which is um, pressure sensitive. And when you're doing sprites, for me what I like to do is make my sprites completely white. <laughs> Um, or on a grayscale, and when I put them into the game, you can in the sprite renderer, you can change the color. If it's white, you can change it to any color you want, um, but it will be one color, unless you mess with that in here. So first off, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, um, and I'm actually going to be doing some dialogue, and I have the dialogue in a document over here on my other screen. It's not important to look at, though. Um, so when our little character finds her firefly, she says, I can feel you in my thoughts. So I'm going to write that really quickly here. So I can feel you in my thoughts. I think that's pretty legible. It's about as legible as I think I want it to be. Um, th this is a little kid character, so it's okay if the writing is not that great. Um, that's kind of the style. And now what we're going to do, this whole thing is going to be a symbol, but what we're going to do right now is just draw a nice little word bubble around. So what I'm going to do is turn this whole thing into a symbol. And you can do that by pressing F8 on your keyboard. And it doesn't matter the name of the symbol. Um, and we double click it. And that brings us into the symbol. You can see here it went from scene one to symbol one. That means we're inside of the symbol, which is what we want. And inside of the symbol, we are going to press F7 and add another frame. And the reason we just lost that other frame is because we're now on an empty frame. But we're going to press onion skin down here so that we can see this. Um, now, I'm just going to, all I'm going to do is trace this. And the reason I'm doing that is because what it does is gives this sprite a really nice wiggly kind of like hand drawn look. And that's a style that I'm going for in this game. The one last thing I like to do is click on this loop button here. And the frame rate is at 24 FPS. And I'll press play and show you what that looks like. 
pretty fast. So what we can do is change that to like eight is usually what I like to do for these. Cool, and now that has like a nice look, I think. Um, it'll be a lot smaller than that in the game. But as you can see, uh, I traced it pretty carefully, and you can see that it's still pretty different frame to frame, especially this little dot up here, but that's okay. Um, it's the look we're going for. Cool, so the actual frame rate you put in here doesn't really matter just for testing, but once we go into Unity, we can actually take this frame rate and just transfer it into the dope sheet on the animator in Unity, so it's good to know. So we're gonna go back to the scene and click on our pointer here. And we're gonna right click on this symbol. So now we've clicked out of the symbol, we're back in the scene. Um, this symbol has two frames in it now. What we're gonna do is generate sprite sheet. And over here you'll notice there's nothing. And that is because the sprite is too big and it's being clipped so it's just showing nothing. So what we're gonna do is make the width a little bit wider and there it is and I've put um, I've put 20 border padding on it just so there's enough space in between when we slice this up in unity and you can make it long and go down like this you can make it long ways like vertically or you can make it long ways sideways to get these two frames in here um, I'm just going to go long because it doesn't really matter that much. So now what we're going to do is figure out where to save this thing. And I'm actually going to go straight into the Unity file, go into Assets, go into My Assets, um, and this is inside of the Unity project. I'm going to go into Textures. These are all folders that I already made because, like I said, this game's already in progress. I'm just updating it with some new stuff. So we have sprites, and I have a folder called UI. I'm just calling this UI. Um, and we'll call this, we'll just call this in my thoughts. Um, you can only save it for fireworks, and that is totally fine. So we're going to save it. We're going to press export. And we are just going to minimize our flash. Cool. So now what we're going to do is we are going to set up this sprite so that it can be animated. So my assets, remember we went to my assets, then we went to textures, then we went to sprites, and then we put it inside of UI. So that's where we are. And here it is. It comes along, if you export directly into your Unity project, it'll come along with this, um, I think it's like a fireworks file. And all you need to do is just delete it. I promise it won't hurt anything. So to set up this sprite um, for animation and to really just be any kind of sprite, what we're first going to do is go over to texture type and we're going to go sprite 2D and UI. It's going to bring down some new options for sprites. We're going to change it to multiple and then we are going to press apply. It's going to give us this here, and that's because it's not a perfectly um, multiplied, I think it's multiplied by four um, sprite sheet, um, but that's okay. This is a pretty low poly game, so we don't really need to worry too much about our performance here. Um, also the size of this sprite is 403 by 4. 545, five, and that's a pretty funky size for a sprite, but it's still totally fine. It just needs to be big enough that it doesn't look pixelated in the scene, and that's totally big enough. So now we're going to go to the sprite editor, um, and let me just pull this down so you can see a little bit better. So it's pretty hard to see because it is a white sprite, um, but since we drew these sprites right on top of each other, um, they should be fairly centered if we just do automatic. Um, and the reason we're doing that is we're going to slice these up and then we're going to animate them on top of each other. So we are going to press slice and as you can see it nicely automatically made these two um, and they should be perfectly centered. If they're not we will find out in just a second but I think it should be fine. And before we exit this you want to press apply. Great. So now we're going to go back to the scene. 
and we're going to go back over to our project over here. We're going to grab in my thoughts, which is now two sprites um, because we sliced it up. And all we are going to do is just grab it and move it into the scene. Um, if it's like this, that means it's like on top of another object. So just make sure you can see it. And when you do that, it automatically knows you're going to be making animation because you dragged multiple sprites into the scene. So I'm going to go over here. I have a folder for animations already. It's in my assets. It's in animations. And I'm super unorganized, so I just have all my animations in one giant folder. Um, and I'm just going to call this uh, in my thoughts. And it doesn't matter. You can just name it as that. You're never really going to look that up ever again, or at least I haven't. So here it is floating over here. And since this game is a platformer, I'm going to want everything to be, right now this doesn't matter so much, but um, everything needs to be on the zero Z axis. So I'm going to just do that right now. And as you can see, it's tiny. Um, this doesn't really matter. I'm going to just pump up the scale a little bit so we can just see it better. Cool. So now it's in the scene pretty much where we want it to be. Um, it's pretty glowy right now, which looks nice um, because of the bloom that I have on the camera. But we're going to turn on the alpha a little bit and make that a little less intense. And we are going to change the color too, to something like that. Nice. That looks good. Um, so now to animate it, we're going to go to our animation window over here. And if you need to bring up an animation window, all you do is go to window and press animation. Um, I already have it in my scene here because I use it quite a bit. So now it already set up a nice animation for us, um, which is the two sprites that we have. It automatically does that. And right now the samples are at 12, but remember we liked eight as our frame rate. So we can just press eight and now it'll look exactly the way that it did in our flash project. So let's press play and see what that looks like. And as you can see in the game here, um, let me go back in the game here, it looks exactly like it should. Um, so that's perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Cool. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, you can see it's here in the scene. Later on in the next video, I will be showing you how to take this guy and probably not with the animator. I actually like to use um, Playmaker to animate all of the different floats like um, the alpha coming in or them bobbing up and down. Um, and actually, I'm just going to jump into the scene really quickly and press play just so I can show you how it looks in the scene. Um, obviously, there's going to be sort of nothing on it, but uh, it should be functioning just fine. So yeah, there it is. Um, eventually, we're going to attach code to it that makes it follow the character and gets triggered to come into play. Um, a lot like this one does here. So pretty soon it's going to look just like that. Great. Cool. Well, I'll see you in the next video. And also, just a quick reminder, um, Little Bug, the game that I'm working on here, is in the middle of a campaign over on Fig. So we could really use your support right now. The link is down in the description. If you want to have your name in the credits of the full game, um, you can go over there and donate. Thank you.